All right, so last podcast, we covered the terrestrial planets. This one, we're covering the Jovian planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So let's start off with Jupiter. Jupiter, a couple interesting facts about Jupiter. It is the largest planet. Um, it is the most massive, uh, it is the most voluminous of all the planets, but it's still less than 1% of the entire solar system's mass, okay? So even uh, though it's really big, it's very small compared to a star. All right, a couple other things. Uh, it is, uh, got some distinguishing features here. You do have these belts, all right, these warmer, uh, low, darker colored clouds. These are actually sinking. And then you have these higher level, cool, light colored clouds. All right, these are called zones. All right, the red stuff is belts and zones. And these are moving in different directions, the different speeds. And then you've got these little uh, storms in here. And then you've got the giant red spot, which is a huge storm. You could easily fit the Earth inside of this thing. Uh, it's been raging for at least 300 years because we don't know if it's been going on before that, because 300 years ago is when we first saw it, uh, because we just developed telescopes. What else? Um, it has uh, the shortest day. All right. Now, a day is one complete rotation, 360 degrees. And a really good question is, how can you tell how long a day is if these belts and zones, these clouds, are moving in different directions? All right. Well, in fact, we actually look at its magnetic field. All right. Uh, its magnetic field is kind of weird. It's perpendicular to it. And when we see the pole transverse, or excuse me, go 360 degrees, then we know it's been a day. Um, <clears throat> its composition. Now, all gas giants are mostly made out of gas. Uh, all terrestrial planets are small and rocky. Question. All right. Is there a solid surface you can stand on? And the answer is maybe. On all gas giants, maybe. All right. There might have been, when the planets were just forming, a rock, bo rocky body that uh, started collecting all this gas and dust. But to be honest, no one really knows. We can't go down and explore it. We can look at its average density and guess whether or not there's some solid, heavier, denser metals down there. Uh, what we're not 100% sure. And I doubt we ever will be. But Primarily, this is hydrogen and helium. The two lightest elements in uh, the universe are mostly make, uh, make up all of the gas giants. Uh, as far as rings and moons, uh, it actually does have rings. Uh, they are very small. They're not nearly as bright as uh, the, the rings around Saturn. Uh, but it does have also the most moons. It has something around 64 moons. Two of the big moons, the four Galilean moons, uh, Io, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede, Ganymede being the largest. Uh, Io and Europa have some interesting features. First off, let's go with Io. Io, all right, uh, let me show you a picture first. Here's Io, and this is Io also, but it's really overexposed, and a feature that should stand out is this thing. What is this? It kind of looks like a big wart. That is not a wart. Io is actually the only other place that we've ever uh, seen active volcanoes. All right, this is a plume from uh, an eruption uh, of a volcano on uh, Io, and the reason is because it's so close. As you guys know, moons are normally much closer to their planets compared to uh, our moon, and if it's really close, the tidal forces squeeze and stretch it, and that squeezing and stretching of your uh, Io's surface actually heats it up, keeping it molten. Europa is another really interesting uh, place because, as we talked about last time, if you want to consider the idea of extraterrestrial life, there are a couple things you need. One of them is liquid water. And planets need to be in that Goldilocks zone. Well, Europa here might, might have liquid water on it, or at least underneath it. Uh, we know it's made out of uh, uh, water but it's in the ice form and what we see these cracks these cracks actually shift and move and that indicates that there might be some kind of deep liquid salty ocean underneath that could potentially harbor life could is the key word there all right saturn so saturn uh, let's talk composition has mostly hydrogen helium but when you look at its overall density compared to all the other planets this is a planet 
that, oddly enough, if you were to try to find a, a bathtub big, big enough and fill it with water, this one would actually float, which is interesting. Uh, but the most standout feature of Saturn is obviously its rings. Uh, it has the biggest and brightest rings, and these rings are not a permanent fixture. All right? They will eventually go away. And the question is then, how did they form? With Saturn's rings, uh, <clears throat> a couple ways it could have formed. We think that A, uh, you had two moons that were in orbit that collided and then destroyed themselves and the debris uh, formed the rings. Uh, or if a moon gets too close, it can cross what is known as the Roche limit. And the Roche limit states that uh, since we've talked about gravity and we know that it's affected by distance, the closer side of a moon is pulled harder than the far side. And what this does is it begins to stretch out the moon, kind of like a football. And if it goes too close and passes this limit, it will actually uh, stretch it out so much that it rips it apart and could form these rings. Rings are very remarkable. Uh, they are only 200 meters thick. and Mostly it's just ice and dust. And uh, out of the 30 moons or so that it has, there's only one that we really want to talk about. Uh, the moon Titan is very interesting because it has a very thick atmosphere composed mostly of nitrogen and methane. Now methane is the stuff that you have coming out of the, uh, the gas jets here, all right, natural gas. And interesting thing here on Titan where we have a water cycle where it rains, water, and you have liquid water and runoff, and then it evaporates and it can freeze. You have the same idea, but with methane. Uh, methane rivers, methane uh, clouds, methane ice. In fact, they even have volcanoes on this, but they're called cryovolcanoes. They're cryo because instead of molten rock that boils up and spews out like in Hawaii, it's actually water. Very, very interesting uh, moon. Uranus. Okay, Uranus. Uranus was actually the first planet that was discovered uh, by telescope. If you go out tonight, you can easily pick out, uh, assuming it's up, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Those are the five visible planets. Uranus, on the other hand, is so far away and so and much smaller than the other gas giants that it's very dim. All right, Uranus and Neptune themselves are only about four times the size of the Earth. They're not that much bigger. And it took the invention of a telescope so we could actually see it. It was, let's see, composition-wise, it is still uh, lots of hydrogen and helium, but you could notice that it's turning this bluish color. All right, that is methane inside of it. And it does have moons, all right, and it does have rings. In fact, all gas giants, if you haven't gotten this so far, are gonna have rings, and they're gonna have a lot of moons. What's really interesting about Uranus is its rotation. Now, most planets are like an ice skater. They're spinning, all right, their axis of rotation is up and down compared to their orbit as they orbit around it. Whereas Uranus, its rotation is more like a ball rolling on the floor. All right. Its axis of rotation is lined up with the equatorial plane of, its rotation is actually lined up with its plane of rotation, or uh, revolution, excuse me, so that it looks like it's rolling on its side. So instead of the axis being north and south like this, it'd be more like this as it orbits around the sun. Very interesting place. And last but not least, Neptune. Neptune also blue uh, means it has lots of um, hydrogen, helium, and methane. It does have rings and it does have moons. Uh, one interesting thing about its moons is that one of its moons, Triton, not Titan, like the moon around Saturn, Triton, T R I T O N, is actually in retrograde orbit. It's going backwards compared to uh, the or uh, planet it orbits. And that also means it was probably captured and eventually will get closer and closer and slam into it. But the coolest thing about it is its discovery. 
we actually predicted that Neptune would be there before we actually saw it. And the reason is we could look back at Uranus and notice that there were these little uh, oddities about its orbit. That every once in a while it looked like it was being tugged on by something more massive further out. So with the, the triumph of Newtonian mechanics we could actually predict that there should be a large planet out here at a certain point pulling on Nep uh, Uranus and that's what we found as Neptune. Those are the four Jovian planets and their properties and that wraps up this vodcast.